this on? Ah, that's better. Okay, hi, morning. This, uh, I expected like six people. Um, so thank you all for coming. Do we, uh, yeah, okay. So um, I got a lot to get through. Uh, the slides are on the, the SCED app. Uh, so if, if I skip over something, you can download and look things up. Um, Okay, who, uh, who, who programs in Go? Oh, n at least half. Okay, that's pretty good. There's gonna be, there's gonna be some Go code. Uh, who likes YAML? Wow, okay. Um, so I, uh, I work at uh, Grafana Labs for the past year, and uh, that's, that's not particularly relevant to the talk, uh, but they do pay me. Um, more importantly, you should follow me on Twitter. Um, so I am going to talk about adding a command to kubectl. Uh, the command is called kubectl events, or right now kubectl alpha events. Um, so uh, start with um, how did I get here? I I basically have no idea, uh, or I had no idea how to add a command to kubectl. Nor, nor did I ever think I would. Um, but I, I was working on this thing, uh, case ban. Uh, who, who's seen that? Uh, a couple of people. So uh, it's pretty cool. I won't talk about it, um, but uh, go, go look it up. It, it, it gives you a, a graphical view of events out of your um, Kubernetes system. Um, so let's just clarify what, it, what do I mean? What am I talking about with events? Can I do lasers? Yeah, not really. I need a, like a more powerful laser. Um, so uh, events are little, little messages emitted by different parts of your Kubernetes system, um, maybe from your own code or maybe from part of the system like Kubelet or the scheduler or uh, really any part of the system, and they, they go into the um, API server. And uh, Let's take a look. This, this is the sort of typical user experience of events. Uh, you run kubectl get events, and you get, um, you get some events out. You, uh, each one has a type, which is either normal or warning. Each one has a short form reason. Um, it has an object here that it relates to and a, a sort of human readable message. Um, so, okay, so far? Okay, we've, we've seen this, right, okay. So, I just wanna adjust this slightly. There we go. Um, so this is what an event looks like if you were to print one out in YAML. Uh, and it's kind of, kind of the same stuff, right? We got the, we got the message, we got the reason. Uh, we got a few more things, like where did it come from? Um, and the events are Kubernetes objects. Uh, so in the sense that they are the same thing to the API server as a, as a pod or a deployment or a PV or you know, any, any of the other uh, objects within the Kubernetes system. So they have metadata, they have a name, they have a namespace, a kind, and a version. Um, so that's gonna be important later. Um, so I became aware when, when working on case band that, that there are some issues with, um, with events, particularly with kubectl get events. Uh, and the, the, the most important one, I think for most people is that they don't come out in the right order. So if I, if I just go back to, uh, I don't know, I don't know if anyone noticed this, but they, they don't print out, and like latest first would be the obvious way to do this, right? And they, they don't, they, they don't come out in the right order. Um, in fact, they come out in order by name, which is like, who, who, even, who even knows the name of an event? So, um, so there are a few more issues uh, with events, which, which we'll maybe talk about in a minute. Um, 
But I also want to note that that, uh, that issue was opened uh, in 2016. Um, so, uh, so I like a challenge, uh, an issue that has been open for, I guess, five years at the time I was working on it. Um, that's, you know, that should be easy, right? Just uh, knock that off, fix it. Um, yeah, there were, there were some comments on the, uh, on the issues as well that uh, lots of other people thought it, it could be fixed in, a, in an afternoon, probably. Um, so uh, never mind. Uh, yeah, well, so why is, this, why is this a hard problem? Why is it not just a question of sorting the events? And the answer is there are two kinds of event. Who, who knew that? Yeah, like nobody. Yeah. I mean, you just came to heckle, right? Uh, three if you count the beta for the, the second one. Um, so the, uh, they have a kind, like, like I mentioned, and, a, and an API version. So the API version of, of the, the first one is, is V1, uh, and it lives in the core library. Um, and I've, I've linked all the code. If you download the PDF, uh, these are all clickable links um, if you, if you want to kind of look in the details. Um, and then uh, this new one was created, and we didn't want such a boring name as v1, so we called it events.kates.io slash v1, uh, I guess. Um, and uh, so this was done so long ago um, that the, the cap for it is, is kind of mostly about the cleanup, like, oh, yeah, we, we are sort of halfway through this, we better finish. Um, so it's a little bit, a little bit kind of half, half, like 90% done, 90% to go. Um, there, almost everything ev emits v1.event. Uh, the scheduler is one component that definitely event, uh, emits the other one. Um, but it will, it will not do that, and it's, there's a race condition on startup. Uh, so it, I, I was kind of trying to do a demo for this, and if you use kind, uh, it doesn't exhibit the problem unless you restart the scheduler. So, um, so I'm not going to demo that. Uh, yeah, you can re read the code. Take my word for it. Um, let's just dive into the, the code a little bit. This, this is the code where the events are created. Um, which I thought made it easier to, to see uh, what's going on. So, so the first kind has um, involved object. It has a first timestamp and a last timestamp. So if events are coalesced, if, if you have the same bit of software emitting the same event over and over again, um, they, they can get coalesced, so, so the server only stores one of them. So we have a, we have a first timestamp, a last timestamp, and an account. Um, and then, quick change. Uh, so in the new one, we have an event time, and if there's more than one, we have a we have a series data structure, which which is, expresses this concept that it happened several times in in a series. Um, they renamed the involved object to, to regarding. Uh, other things like uh, the reason is still called reason. The message is now called note. Um, so, like, it's a rename a thon. Um, now, uh, Kubernetes is very big on backwards compatibility. Um, so, the good news, if you like, is, is that there is magic inside the API server that converts one, each of these to the other one. And either way, you can ask for either of these and you'll get them. And even better, all of the fields from the new one are also in the old one. They, they were added, so, so like all of the fields, all of the choices are there. You can ask for event time on, on the old kind of event. It, it, it is null, but you, it's there. You can ask for it. 
Um, and in fact, that is, that is why they don't sort in the right order. Uh, because, because anything emitting the new kind of event uh, has, has a null in, in the um, last timestamp. Uh, and this used to crash kubectl. Um, so that was even more fun. But uh, I think they fixed the crashing about a couple of years ago. Um, so the ones with null just sort at the top. Okay, so how do we fix this? Um, so Kubernetes is, is, is obviously a very, very big uh, project, and um, you, can't just, you can't just go around changing stuff. You can fix stuff, you can fix bugs without you know, asking someone's permission. Um, but uh, fundamentally changing the behavior of something needs the Kubernetes enhancement process. Um, it kind of sounds grand, but, but basically someone has to propose something and write a document, and then it, it gets accepted by a SIG, the, the special interest groups. That, that's who really governs Kubernetes. Um, so in the case of kubectl, it's SIG CLI. Uh, you know, the other ones are like SIG Network, SIG API Machinery, also all different SIGs. You can, you can look them up. Um, and... Uh, yeah, so, so the happy path, it, it gets implemented. Uh, it can also get uh, deferred or rejected or whatever, but we, we won't talk about that. Um, so I found that there was already a cap approved um, to fix kubectl get events. Uh, and so this was extremely lucky because I, I don't think I would have had the patience to get a, get a new cap approved. Um, so it was uh, started, the cap came into existence October 2019, um, was marked as implementable, that's the kind of approved phase, uh, three months later, uh, and then time passes. I opened my PR February 2021. Uh, it took six months to get the PR merged. Um, and then a couple more months to get uh, released. Well, it's, it's alpha right now. It was released in 1.23. So you can use this now. Um, uh, I didn't bring enough swag for everyone, but you, you can have a command. Um, okay, so let's talk about the command. Um, uh, so the, 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 the really cool thing is the uh, Timestamps come out in the right order. Um, that's it, really. <laughs> um, okay, let, let's let's go into a bit of detail. Uh, okay, yeah. So so you you have some options. So if you if you just run kubectl alpha events, it, it'll it'll print them all for um, the, current, the default namespace. Uh, so you can ask for all namespaces or a particular namespace like dash dash namespace. Um, I just, sorry, just I see some people standing at the door. There are some seats right at the front. I, I, won't, I won't like uh, insult you or anything if you wanna sit near the front. Um, uh, and, and then you can, do, uh, you can do events for one object and you can watch for new events. Um, so the, the other thing that people complain a lot about kubectl get events is that if you, if you watch, if you sort of get them to come out as they happen, um, they, all, they all come out as they happen and then they all print out again one hour, one hour later. All the same events one hour later. Who, who knows why that is? Yeah, nobody, right. Uh, it's because they get deleted. Events, events only live for one hour, and uh, kubectl get minus watch um, uh, prints out uh, things being created and things being deleted. Why not? Um, anyway, so, so my one uh, skips the deleted event. So the extra value, double, double value, okay. Okay, so yes, right. Now this, this, is, the, this is the talk, we'll, we'll start. Um, okay, so suppose you want to add a command to kubectl. Uh, what are you going to do? You are going to um, create a command object. So, so kubectl uses the 
uh, Cobra package for CLI applications. And um, so this is the, the kind of uh, what I called step zero. Like you're, you're not going to go anywhere unless you create this command object. Um, so what I did uh, is I, I looked at the um, existing commands, like, like kubectl get, for instance, or kubectl describe, or whatever. You, I guess that's, that's kind of the uh, a booster to get going, is to find a command that does something a little bit similar to what you want to do and copy paste that. Um, so you're going to need your command object. Um, so the next thing, every command, there's a kind of a pattern where the, the work is split into two phases. So there's a phase of collecting command line arguments, uh, and they get put in a struct, basically vanilla. Um, and then the next phase, we kind of decode the command line arguments, and we figure out what to do with them. And the reason it's split into those two parts is, is for testing. Um, so that we can kind of independently test the act of, of receiving CLI parameters separate from the act of actually doing some work on them and, and make that easier to test. So, um, so I kind of highlighted, uh, so if, if you have a parameter like namespace, um, well that actually goes into uh, this guy, gets kind of pre-populated um, so that when you talk, this, the rest, rest is like the API client to the API server, and, and that will be populated by the machinery of kubectl uh, to give you a client that is talking to the right namespace. Um, and then, th so this one is one that I added on my command, um, and it, it's a string. You know, that, so this, that's what I mean, that the, the, the first phase is, is just very, very plain. We're just fetching the arguments and getting them into a struct. So in the, in the next phase, um, uh, so same kind of thing. Well, it turns out I need to know the namespace. Um, so I pull that out from the, the rest client getter. And then the... Um, so this thing here, which object we're trying to fetch events for, gets uh, decoded into something more complicated. Um, and we'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, so, the, and these two things are, uh, the pattern is that the first one is called flags and the second one's called options. So this is a pattern within kubectl um, that all the existing commands follow. Um, so probably the next thing we're going to do is, is make a API server request. And there is a really cool builder uh, library to, um, to do all kinds of things with uh, uh, API server requests. So this one is from kubectl describe. Because this is not actually how kubectl events works. But I thought, you know, this is, this is the kind of the powerful library that will work for many, many cases. So it's, um, it's this kind of pattern where each piece kind of leads on from the next. Uh, it's called like a fluent API. That, that's the word that some people use for this kind of thing. Um, so we have a builder, and we're going to fetch unstructured data, so not Go objects, just, just name value stuff. Uh, and we're in a namespace, um, maybe all namespaces. We're, we're selecting on some labels. Uh, we're going to flatten them. So if we get a list of things, we don't want the list. We want all the objects. Um, so this is very, very comprehensive um, and very powerful. And it also covers things like, like chunking. So when you, uh, when you talk to the API server and say, give me all the events, there might be a million of them. Um, and we, we do not want to serialize a million events into one buffer and send that over the network. So in fact, we fetch them like 500 at a time, uh, chunking or paging. And all of that is, um, is covered by the uh, machinery inside kubectl. So that's, 
I guess this is one of the most important things I wanted to, to mention here, that there, there are these libraries, and when I was working on this, um, I, I didn't know anything about them, and, and it's also that I didn't find any kind of tutorials. Uh, I did find the existing code, but I had to kind of work backwards and figure out what it did. Um, so this stuff, uh, really powerful, really, really useful. Now, why, uh, why could I not use it? Um, so, uh, if you remember uh, the event, um, and we're going to look, we're going to uh, look for all events re relating to one object. So we're going to build a query that is a little bit different to the ones that the builder knows how to do. And even worse, uh, I don't know, who, who's, who spots the difficulty here? It's very, very subtle. So, um, yeah. So in my, um, in my example here, pod has a small letter, because that's how we write pod when we're just typing really fast. Uh, and the thing in the database has a capital letter. Okay. How are we going to get past this? So, so now we need to get into the concept of API resources and kind versus resource. Uh, so let's, let's try and do that at a high level. Um, so you can get a kind of a hint of this uh, if you run the command uh, kubectl API resources. Um, so this queries the API server, brings down a ton of metadata, and, and prints out this table. Um, let me move my mouse. So it's not getting in everyone's way. Um, yeah, so, like, so here, here's where we say pod. Uh, and in fact, it, it, um, it accepts the singular, even though the thing that's in its table is the, is the plural. There's an abbreviation, so you can save one more character, if you like, you can type pull, uh, which is a, a, a bit more useful for something like config map, you can type cm. Um, it knows the version, it knows whether it's namespaced, and this is the thing that we need to query for in the, in the database. So this is the kind, uh, which is the, the sort of official thing that it's filed under. Um, and this is the name. This is what we get to type. I don't know. I don't make the rules. You know, this, it works, right? It's, you know, trust me. But you do have to go through this, um, you do have to go through this, this uh, hoop. Um, so we need to, go from a group version resource, uh, which is the thing with the lowercase, to a group version kind. Um, so group is like API or apps or something like that. Version is like v1, v1 beta 1. Uh, and, and resource is the one with the lowercase. And po uh, kind is the one with the uppercase. Anyway, so there is a... Um, uh, yeah, so we, we, we indirect through the uh, metadata, which is in um, the API server, and we, we end up with the, uh, the kind. Um, so we have the kind and the name, which is like pod slash name. Uh, and then there's this other cool um, uh, part of the machinery where we, we get to just say, uh, I'm going to and these two things together. Um, so this equals this, and this equals this. So I can build up my query on the fields of the event object. Um, and that's what I'm going to send to the event ser uh, the API server. Uh, yeah, so, so in order to get the kind, um, so this is, this is the way I ask the API server for all the metadata. I ask for a, a thing called a REST mapper. Um, I fill in what I've got, 
So this is a struct that can take a group, a version, and a resource, but I, I only need to fill in the, the bit I've got, which is like the word pod in lowercase. So I fill in the bit I've got and I ask it to map it. Uh, so this can be pod or pull or, you know, config map or CM or wh whatever you've got, you fill that in here. Uh, you ask it to map it and then you extract the kind from that. Uh, so that's how we go from what I type in to uh, what I need to query on. So this is, this is really powerful. If, if you're doing this stuff, um, and it just won't work if you don't do this. So it's important. Um, I skipped error handling because that's what you do in a talk. Uh, okay. And um, so the last thing we need to do is we need to execute my query. Um, so I, I mentioned before th the idea of, of chunking or paging the um, things that come back. So that, that's what this guy does. Follow continue. We'll, we'll get 500 and then another 500, then another 500. Um, and uh, it takes a callback or a continuation or whatever you want to call it. Um, and we can extract my objects from here and, and deal with them. So, um, so this is kind of the guts of, in, in kubectl events, uh, uh, well, it turns out what the main thing we're trying to do is sort them. So I actually just add them to a slice in, in Go. I, I add them to the end of a big, a big array of events and then sort them. But um, so that's, uh, that's what you have to do. Uh, you have to build your uh, Cobra object, uh, get the flags from the command line, you have to decode them into options, and then you have to do your thing. <sighs> okay. So, uh, let's see, let's see how we did. Um, so these are the main issues that were uh, listed in the, in the cap. This is the reason why we need to change it. Um, so number one, they don't come out in the right order. Yes. Um, number two, they print out one time and then again an hour later. Fix that. Um, number three, uh, oh, so, so kubectl describe will also print events. Um, but it, it prints them out for exactly one object. Uh, so if you want to, if you want to kind of watch all the events on one deployment or one pod or, or something like that, um, and that changes at all, then the, the events stop. Well, you just can't watch on describe, I think. Anyway, uh, so my one is less specific, so, so I'm going to call that one done. Um, Combining columns. Well, this, this was about uh, the, some of them have last timestamp and some of them have um, event time. Uh, so I just do that in Go code. Uh, so we'll call that done. Um, and uh, so there's, there's one more um, which, which I'm going to say is not done. Uh, a timeline of events. So, so if you read the narrative on this issue, it's, it's kind of saying, if I ask for events, it, sh it should kind of print out the interesting ones. Um, it, you know, it should tell me cool stuff that happened on my cluster recently. And so I haven't implemented that. Uh, I'm not even sure how to implement it. Um, okay. Yeah, what's next? What, um, what might we do uh, for this command? It is in alpha. So um, definitely looking for feedback and looking for um, thoughts, uh, you know, bugs in it or um, ways to improve it or, or whatever. So one, uh, one idea would, would be to add a thing to limit how, how far back. Like, you know, maybe you just want to see events in the last five minutes or, or something like that. So that, that would be, that, that's, I think kind of related to the one about the time, uh, I want to see a timeline of interesting events, so just like the last five minutes or the last one minute or something like that might be 
might be more useful. Um, this one, related objects, is is one that I uh, that I like. Um, so what I mean by this is, um, if some if I've got like a deployment and something is going wrong with it, uh, it could be going wrong on the deployment. It could be going wrong on the replica set which the deployment creates. It could be going wrong on a pod, and they're all kind of related. Um, but uh, you have to be a, a sort of uh, Kubernetes super being to know where to look for this information. So, um, so maybe, the, maybe the thing could just know that itself and, and do that. Um, yeah, and, and lastly, you know, what, what do you want? What, uh, I, I, I put it out there for the world. Um, please uh, file issues or, I don't know, send me tweets. Send tweet. Uh, anyway, that's the end of my talk. I'll take questions in a minute. Thank you, Brian. Um, before everyone rush for lunch, uh, we have Q&A. And for those of you who are going about to leave, please be quiet and for the rest of the, the session. Anyone? Questions? All right. Thank you very much for the talk. It was awesome. Uh, quick one. Will the, the new events replace the old one at, at some time? Is that the idea, I think? Yeah, well, so there, there's a cap uh, for new events to replace old ones. The, the new events are more flexible. Um, so yes, that's, that's uh, yeah, maybe I should have researched that. Um, I, I guess that's one for SIG API machinery or, or something like that. I mean, certainly, certainly that's the stated intention is that the Kate's dot uh, IO slash events uh, should replace v1 dot events, but in a backwards compatible way, right? So, so you can always query for the for the previous one. The same question, but on get events. So you introduce something new in alpha. We don't want again two options, right? So when is the point in time that the uh, get events is going to deprecate it? And we will have only kubectl events. Yeah, now that's, that's a really good question. So, um, so one of the reasons why I couldn't just hack on get events is, is it is implemented in a very, very generic way. Um, so when you say kubectl get, uh, I'm, I'm kind of switching between kubectl, kubectl, kubectl. I don't know. Anyway, if, when you do get, um, Almost everything happens in the API server. Uh, kubectl does not know about the thing you're about to, to print out. Uh, and, and that's really, really flexible. That means you can use it on things like CRDs that, that were not known about when, when kubectl was written. Um, but it makes it incredibly hard to do something like, like uh, pick two, one of two different timestamps depending on which type of object it is. Um, so uh, my opinion is that that kubectl get events will always do the dumb thing it does today. Uh, that kubectl get events will will never be deprecated, will never be enhanced. Um, unfortunately, because of a technical detail of the fact that it's implemented in the API server, and, and, and it's, just, it's just a kind of raw, it's a breaking of the layers to put that intelligence at that layer. Hello. Hello. Does this command in its current state support wildcards or regex matching? Uh, no. Um, uh, let me think about that. Uh, so some of these things work on a prefix, and I actually don't remember whether that works for kubectl get events. But um, uh, I, I mean, I showed you the code. It says equal. Uh, so right now, it, it doesn't have a regex matching. But uh, file, file an enhancement request on um, GitHub slash Kubernetes slash kubectl. Thank you for the talk. 
So you just mentioned that you did not find any tutorial or something to fix it. You have to dig the code. So what is your advice for our newbies if you want to implement or fix anything? Oh, um, well, to some extent, that's why I did this talk. Uh, I, I hope I gave you some pointers. And, and uh, definitely go uh, to the, the, the notes for the talk. There's a lot of links there. Um, uh, so if, if you're a total newcomer, I would advise a couple of things. Um, uh, tests are a great, great place to start. You, know, you, can, you can look at some tests and look at the coverage and, and expand it a little bit. Um, and, and people are going to love you for it. Unit tests, particularly. Um, uh, if you're a, a wanting a, more of a challenge, look at the flaky tests and, and stop them flaking. Or you know, pick one and, and figure out why it's flaking uh, and, and fix that. Um, next thing, you can uh, listen in to the SIG meetings, or you can use, find the, them on YouTube and, and like follow along. Uh, visit one or two. You don't have to say anything. You can just show up and, and kind of listen to how it goes and get an idea. And then, and then you, can, you can show up. You can say, hi, I, you know, do you need help with something? Uh, so that's my, my top three tips for getting started as a newbie. So you had to implement the parsing of the uh, kind uh, and uh, object name in the uh, kubectl uh, command. Uh, isn't, shouldn't that be already implemented uh, in a more generic way? Because we have uh, kubectl create, delete, and uh, get. It doesn't, doesn't it uh, exist uh, there? Yeah. Yeah, so I, I think I agree with the spirit of what you're saying. That, that I mean, I, I tried to demonstrate there's some really powerful libraries in there but still not exactly the thing I wanted. And in, in some case, like the thing, that, that specific thing that you mentioned about how to decode the name, that is in kubectl describe, um, but it's not exported. And uh, after a little bit of to and fro with the maintainers, uh, we agreed that I would um, re-implement it. So there's a kind of a go proverb, a, a little copying is better than a little dependency. Um, so it's kind of better just to copy paste it once and then maybe over time we can figure out it should be a reusable library. Uh, anyway, I, I think I agree with you in, in spirit, but uh, it is what it is. All right. We're, we're Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Brian. Have a nice lunch. Thank you.